Doing good, man. How you doing? Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, give me just one moment. Let me walk outside. All right, sure. I'm right in the middle of the call center right now. So okay, no problem. Sorry about that. How's it no, going? No, you're doing good, man. Doing good. Uh, Are you yeah. at work right now? Uh, I appreciate you uh, giving me a call so quick. Yeah, no, man. You, you were saying that you you were able to talk, so I didn't uh, know uh, what would be a good time for you. But you know, like I said I'm I'm off on weekends, so I just you know just uh want to reach out to you, and you know, and and like I said last night, uh, you know, just to avail myself, man, to anybody that needs help and and um, you know wanting to uh, you know seek any type of. Uh, assistance as far as trying to get out of uh out of abc or any other type of uh church that has a you know manipulative stronghold on them so um you know that's why that's why i gave you my number man didn't want to uh didn't want to pressure you or anything like that but at least, least wanted to offer the the opportunity to avail myself if you were uh you know willing to uh to talk so so um yeah i really just want to talk to you and touch base um i'll give you just a quick some of you know of kind of what's been going on uh for me mm -hmm. um me and my family you know we started uh it, it's hard man it's, it, it's hard uh yeah you know, uh i really do believe um originally that like i told you before like the the core of the message it did help save me and my family got me out of living away i shouldn't have been living as far as you know the music i was listening to all the time like uh, and I'm learning now even, it's definitely been, you know, overblown inside the church, but I was definitely, you know, falling away from, from where I should be as a husband and father. Uh, that wasn't too bad, just not, you know, just not right either. And, um, me and my wife, you know, we had problems, uh, nothing too crazy, but just weren't getting along with well. us. Family structure was messed up. Um, I was staying at home trying to go back to school uh, online for a while. My wife was working uh, full time. Um, we had our kind of issues um, right around the times when uh, I had been looking to uh, pass the Z on and off. You know, I had a couple of DVDs. Uh, well, really, honestly, I, I saw them for the first time on YouTube. Um, and I, I felt like God showed me that at the time. When I needed to hear it, because it really kind of woke me up to some of those things I was doing. And, um, uh, me and my wife, we ended up, uh, after having a big fallout one night, uh, we started talking, and we, we decided, you know, I finally got her to, to listen to what some of the stuff I, you know, some of the stuff Pastor, Pastor G talks about, which now I see is probably a little too extreme about it. <laughs> At the time, you know, uh, uh, it, it, it helped us in a way because I, I was able to tell my wife and it to her that I, I was wrong for putting so much pressure on her for her being, you know, the sole provider at that time, me staying at home, uh, just being kind of a loser. Um, he, I was able to get conviction through his message. Mm -hmm. and it, 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 that helped me. Uh, so we made the decision moved down here we weren't too far away uh, anyways and i was already from this area i grew up in grand prairie uh not too far from here but um when i met my wife she was living um so i ended up moving down there and we had been living there and had kids it's been years since i moved since i've been here okay. um but after hearing the message and all we went through decided we wanted to ch completely change the structure of our family as far as me, you know, being the, the provider, protector, priest of my home, um, I felt like I needed, you know, to get somewhere. Like Pastor G always said, you, you need to be around like-minded believers. And at that time, I didn't have any around me where we were, especially none that were, you know, thinking like that. <laughs> um, so we moved down here, which, you know, I'm here. I, I definitely don't regret because I have family here. Um, my mom, dad, sister, they all live in this area. Um, so that was a good thing anyways. I should have, we should have done that years ago just because they've been able to give us so much help with the kids uh, and stuff that we didn't have for years, which also led to a lot of our problems. Mm -hmm. you know, we went five, almost five years without ever going on a date after we had a kid, our kid. You know, it was just, 
Um, so, it, you know, it, that part did help me. Like, it, it, it convicted me to, you know, at least change that. Mm -hmm. But because of that, it led me into more, like, I'm like, well, if he's so right about that, we need to listen to more about, you know, all this other stuff he's talking about. And a lot of, you know, like a lot of people, it seemed kind of crazy, a lot of the conspiracy stuff at first. Um, but it is entertaining sometimes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it's a thin line. Once you start watching enough and enough, and then you start really buying into, you know, because he uses the word. And so the, what God spoke to me recently is the word's the word. It's not him. The word and the spirit drew me. Um, and that's what convicted me. It wasn't, it wasn't him. It was mm -hmm. the word that convicted me. Um, but I had twisted it to a way where I was so thankful that I was almost, you know, or I definitely was putting him on a, on a plate pedestal he didn't deserve to be on. Right. And I know now. Gotcha. Um, anyways, uh, fast forward, there's a whole, a whole lot more. Yeah. Uh, to it. How, how much, how much time do you have? Let me ask you. Now you have on break because I want to make sure that we get the su I get the substance of your of your you know oh, call. I'm good. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is I'm really not my work day. I'm coming in just to help. Okay. And it's, uh, it's actually a really really late easy day right now. And, okay. Uh, cool. Arrive so. Okay. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Okay. So what what made you what made you I guess did you watch any of the videos that I put up or something? I mean, how did you even hear about me? So. Um, just like I felt like God, uh, did use G at the time I needed it for, mm -hmm. for that specific word. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've been in the church now for five, going on five years. Um, I was part of the AV team. I was a camera guy. Uh, I actually know, uh, pretty well. Me and him were in a together at the church the last couple of years. Um, okay. I've been noticing some inconsistencies uh, between the way Pastor Z preaches, and then I started some of the way noticing some of the ways he uh, gives other people passes on things, uh, mm -hmm. mainly people in his you know upper inner circle that I'm noticing. I'm learning more and more now. There definitely is. <laughs> wow. Uh, um, and I can see you know some of the passes he's giving to people. Uh, which just really confused me. I'm like, like, how is it you're able to preach this way to us? But then I'm seeing things out in the public from people in his inner circle, and they're they're sharing it publicly. And not only they're sharing it, people like Jay Bryan are, are liking it and doing things. And it just was very contradictory to what he's teaching all of us. Give me, give me an example. Give you're talking about because I'm, I'm i'm not familiar with that so i mean just give if you, if you can recall any examples of inconsistency that you mentioned uh basically uh i'd seen a post that was shared um online recently by one of his you know close close followers um who's you know uh, i mean it's hard to it's hard to share because uh yeah it, um Here's the thing, like, all right, let me let me backtrack just a little bit. Sure. So, um, I'm kind of seeing these inconsistencies, and while I'm seeing them, I there's a few other. Give me yeah. one sec. Let me let me move. I am in a parking garage. Let me move out of here. I'm sorry about that. Okay. Um, but yeah. So, um, uh, while I was you know noticing things and things started to bother me more uh, yeah. recently, I decided that I needed to get into the word myself more okay conviction all of a sudden like i've been like before i heard anything you said or anybody i felt god's conviction telling me you're listening you know, you're you're you need to get into my word if you want to know me mm. and, and to pastor g's credit he always says you know y'all need to read your bible that's not that's not my job you should be at home reading your bible which that's a whole other issue right you know? <laughs> right well, but it is partially true. True, true. Uh, right, right, right. This ain't being quiet. I have been guilty of not doing it as much as I should have. Mm -hmm. uh, for sure, because, you know, I work and I, I'm busy just like everybody else. So I do rely a lot on, on you know, what I thought was a man of God to, to educate me on things. Uh, right. Sometimes when I don't always have the time or the, you know, the, um, you know, just the mental aptitude sometimes to understand some of the things I'm reading. Um, in the Bible, uh, you know, it's, there, there's parts that 
require interpretation, and um, and you, you know, you hope you had the right people around you to do that. Right. Um, but the part that started bothering me is, is after five years. So after five years, I've been in that church. I'm part of the AV team. I um, helped build the, you know, I helped with the new building. I'm in there working, cleaning. Uh, my wife uh, teaches a lot of the homeschool classes. My wife takes out the trash every Sunday. She, they made her the official trash lady. Right. It didn't bother her, and it still doesn't. She doesn't even complain about it to this day. Okay. Um, she never has. She was thankful to help any way she can. Right. Uh, I'm a good wife. Uh, Amen. Yeah. Um, Man, but it, it did bother me. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I mean, as, uh, as a man, as a man, it should. As a man, it should have. And um, yeah. Uh, well, anyways, the point I'm making is we were deep into the church. Right. I'm working on things to serve. We're doing things. All this. Sorry, it's been five years. I've never been given Pastor G's number. Um, I've never talked to him personally ever for more than five seconds. It's like any time I would try to even have a conversation with him. He would, you know, he always seemed so busy, and I and I understood that, and so I would almost feel guilty for even trying to take a minute of his time. But at the same time, it's like, how do you grow as a believer when I can't? I'm supposed to have this guy to help interpret things that I might have questions with, and I can't even get a a question answered because I can't get five minutes with him. And I feel like, and then what bothers me is I know other people in the church who seem to have this really personal relationship with them. Right. And every time I would talk to, you know, the friends, they'd be like, reach out to the pastor. And I'd be like, well, that'd be great. I've, been, I've never been given his number. Right. Um, and, they, you know, they'd be like, I got a number. I'm like, well, that's not your place to get me. Like, right. It, you know, it just, uh, I don't know. It just felt, he, he seems very standoffish. Like, you have to be in that inner circle to really even be able to talk to him. It is. It is. That's exactly what it is. I know that for a fact. I know that for a fact. Yeah. You can even say things in, in the sermons, you know, like, you know, the, as the church grows, I'm not going to have time to sit and talk to everybody. You can't get your feelings hurt. Sometimes you just got to listen to the message and let the message teach you. Well, it's the same message all the time. I mean, we're going over the same few scriptures and this is just very like coming to me. Like, I'm not learning what I need to do with some of the stuff I'm reading in the Bible. Uh, and obviously they have a culture there where some of the questions I have uh, that I need help with and interpretation to, I was scared to ask because I know just me asking those questions, I'm going to be labeled, you know, as an unbeliever or a heretic because I have questions about things. Wow. And all, and all I want is just to have a conversation and get some understanding. Right. Uh, but I just feel like I never had that opportunity. Uh, maybe that's partially me. I am kind of socially, I don't know. I'm not real outgoing. Uh, I, I try to at the church. Um, I mean, I'm real friendly. You can talk to Ethel now. I'm real friendly, but I'm not, I don't, I don't like to pressure people into talking to me. Right. Uh, and so I would always just let him go his own way or whatever. And so, you know, we would have like heroes meetings, right? Yeah. And after the end of every meeting, uh, most of the time he would, he would ask any questions. And they would walk around, you know, with the mic. You raise your hand and ask your question. And um, there was a couple times uh, where myself and multiple other people, we would ask questions about things that were going on in our lives or things we had uh, questions with in the Bible. And so I'm not kidding, time and time again, I watched him go, uh, I would watch a, a brother or me go, hey, Pastor, I'm going through this. I'm reading the Word. I'm just curious what this means. And his answer his answer, I swear to you, was, you don't have part four? Wow. Uh, no, sir, I don't, have, I don't have that. Well, you need to get part four. I can't sit here and, and preach to you part four. Go, go get part four. Wow. And, and it, time and time again, uh, I, I would ask questions other people, you know, I've seen part eight? Well, you, you need to go get part eight. Wow. Like, you know what? He doesn't offer. These are members of the church right. who have been years. Right. He doesn't offer to get them part eight. Or part four. He's telling them, go buy it. Right. Go buy it. Yeah. These are people's questions. Some of them say, go, <laughs> I moved down here. Like I said, my family was jacked when we moved down here. We're out of order. I, I give you that. Um, we decided we wanted to get things right. When I moved down here, we sold our car, uh, my wife's car, with a little bit of money. So we didn't have anything. I was renting a house there. Um, we moved. I sold our car, so we had about 
We had about $3,000 that I got from that car. Um, keep in mind, when I moved down here, I didn't have a job. Uh, so trying to get a place to live with no job and just a little bit of money, <laughs> hard thing to do. Yeah. Um, so I did the only thing I knew to do. I, I looked around for the best area I could find, and uh, me and my family ended up moving basically into a hotel and to the budget suites. Um, yeah, I, was looking, so I was looking at the budget suites with me and my... Oh, I'm sorry, I don't want to... No, brother, I, I, brother I, my, my heart is breaking with you, dude. My heart is breaking with you, bro. So if you, if you break down, brother, I'm, I'm, I'm almost right there, right there with you, dude. Because I've... Your story, bro, is just, just, as, just as disappointing and heartbreaking as others that I've heard, man. So you, you, you're okay here, man. You're okay. You're all right. So we were there for three years living in this hotel. Um, yeah. I had a lot of how many people I even had in there for us to be in there. Uh, but I had to, I had to get us somewhere. Uh, we had nowhere to go. Um, uh, so, whatever at the time, I was happy to do it. I was like, whatever, this is a sacrifice that, you know, apparently God wants us to, he wants to see that we're willing to make. Uh, that's how I saw it in my head. Like, God's wanting to see how, how much we're willing to sacrifice for this. So, like, so I was, you know, willing to do it. My life was, you know, more than happy to do it by this point, because um, we were buying in. Um, well, I moved in there. Um, I don't know. All the job experience I do have from the past was retail work and warehouse. You know, it's not high paying jobs. Right. Um, very low paying jobs. Yeah. Um, I had started going back to school uh, online, but I hadn't finished my degree, and I was in so much debt. Uh, student loan debt, which is another stupid thing I should have never done. But I was in so much student loan debt that I couldn't even finish uh, finish my degree. Um, so trying to get a job was difficult, especially one that paid anything. Um, took the first job offer I got, which is where I'm still at today. Um, uh, it's a district call center. Uh, just doing tech support. I started out an hour. Mm -hmm. Um at the time, I was like, it's something. Uh, I can I can at least try to make this work. You know, we, when we got on food stamps, um, getting anything assistance we can. An hour is not enough to get us out of the budget suites. Um, but at least I'm getting, you know, I was getting job history, you know, lined up, this and that. I'm working. Uh, God did bless the work of my hands, which is one thing Pastor does say to pray a lot. I'm trying to give credit for that. I do believe that that part works uh, because that's not him again. That's the Bible. Um, I'm learning that now yeah. uh, more and more. Uh, but I did pray that prayer, and, and the Lord has blessed my work. I've been um, fortunate enough. I've been promoted, you know, a few times. I'm not still not making great money, yeah. uh, but definitely better than than what I was starting out at. Um, uh, I've been moved up a few times, which you know, glory to God. Yeah. Uh, I was at least able to, just recently, uh, last year, was able to move out of the budget suites uh, and into our now two-bedroom apartment, which still isn't, you know. Yeah, yeah. But it's an upgrade right. over where we were. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but what's I'm talking about? I'm going through stuff like that. People at the church, and the people I talked to, they knew where we were and what we were dealing with. And then when I ask questions, you tell me to go buy a DVD. Like... That, that bothers me. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't like, I don't like putting other people's business out, so I won't say names or anything, but I do have a friend in the church still who, um, I'm, th I'm still talking to because I, I do have people I'm still trying to help. Right. Uh, and, uh, and I'm trying to, you know, that everybody, you know, is different, and I feel like I need to be a little more gentle with him because he's, you know, he, he's, he's a different personality and he's in, he's in it really deep. Like, um, but I've heard his story, and uh, he moved down here from South Carolina. Um, when he moved down here, he was in the same situation. He didn't have a job uh, down here or anything, so he had to leave his wife and his kids in South Carolina, drove down here, and was living in his car. Um, and he, I know for a fact he told me, you know, he was talking to Elder uh, Aaron at the time. I think it was Pastor's cousin. Yep, yep, um, yep. He said... So I know he was in communication with the church. 
Uh, I don't like giving people's business, so I don't know. I didn't ask him if, you know, if they ever helped him or anything, but I know he was living in his car. I'm like, I'm like, so you're down here trying to, you know, better yourself, and, and they know you're living in, in your car. And yet when people are asking questions, trying to get help in the world, he's he's pushing DVDs. Like, that, that, so that was bothering me from the get-go. Yeah. Um, but I overlooked it because the message. I was like, well, it's the message. It's the message. Uh, he might not, you know, the way he, he might be going about is not perfect, but the message is working. Da, 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 da. Uh, but recently more, uh, I started thinking on it. It's just really bothered me, that, that kind of stuff. Um, and to see how many people I know that are still just struggling financially in this church and to see him pull up in a Ferrari um, at the church. To see him, to see him pull up in a Ferrari, to see him constantly pushing DVDs to members of the church, uh, tell them, I can't sit here and preach to you, you need to go buy part four. Well, can't, can't you just answer the question I have about the scripture? Oh, that's in part three or whatever, you know, I'm like, well, can you, can you give me the DVD? Like, I didn't ever ask that, but that's what I'm thinking. I don't, I don't like to ask for stuff. But it's like, bro, you know what some of these people are going through and what they're doing to be here. You can't help them a little bit. Uh, I mean, we're going to withhold the word from people for money. And that's what you're doing. Like, and the more I'm thinking about it, like, recently, like, I understand in the beginning, maybe, when he started making these, these DVDs or whatever, I understand, you know. It probably did, it, it took his own money then. Uh, maybe, I don't know what kind of job he had. Whatever he said he worked in this and that, so... If that's true, I understand it, it did take and require his own money to produce those DVDs. I get that. And so, he, you know, it cost him money to make. He to make it back. I understand that. Now, now, though, you're a, I know he's a millionaire. Yes, he is. He's a multi-millionaire. He's a multi-millionaire. He has a Ferrari. Uh, come on now. I'm so, uh, he, um, he's a multi-millionaire. Um, he has a website where he can post anything he, he chooses to post he posts lots of other stuff um he has youtube he can post anything on for free why why are you still selling the word of god when you could you have all these platforms you could easily put it out there for people for free and when i read his uh, other people have asked him this and he, he still uses the answer well I, I gotta pay for these cameras i gotta pay for this time i gotta pay for this i gotta pay for that where, how is he paying for it? He doesn't work a job. Right. It's from him. It's the church. It's the church. Dude, dude nobody on the AV team gets paid. Nobody. We're, dude, there, there's people traveling out of state with him, uh, hauling camera equipment, running wires, um, doing, setting up boom cams, you know, the whole, it's a production. Right. None, none of them are getting paid. I, I know that for a fact. None of, them, none of them are getting paid. I know that for a fact in that. I was in the AV team, bro. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm telling you. <laughs> I know. I know. Yep. You ain't lying. You, you're not lying. I know you're not lying. I know it for a fact, bro. I know it for a fact. I because know at the same time, he's telling people to buy his DVDs when they ask questions. Because he's a pimp. Because he's a pimp, bro. He's a pimp. And so, the more I'm talking to you, the more I feel like, so I'm, I'm dealing with all this internally, right? Yeah. And I have all these questions. Now that I'm getting into my work, I'm starting to have questions that I can't get answers to. Um, and I almost feel, I feel guilty to even ask me some of the questions because I'm scared that they're just going to boot me out. Uh, and you got to understand, my kids are part of that homeschool group for five years now. Right. My wife is part of that. It's hard to just come out of that. I understand. Uh, I understand. It's hard. Uh, understand. You're, leaving, you're, like you're leaving your family. Yeah. Um, and, but honestly, that's a whole other thing. Like, other than a couple people like who I know, bro, we've been there five years. Um, recently... Uh, my job started having me work overtime more on Sunday, and I, God knows I need the overtime. Uh, right, right. We're still, we're still struggling. Um, so I, I need the overtime. So I started having to work on Sundays uh, to get some over, overtime. Right. So I would text. We had a group text going for the AV team. At the, um, I can't remember what Lauren L was. Was he part of the AV team? I think he was at one point, right? Maybe, I don't remember. It's all blurring together now. Yeah. But, um, so I haven't been able to be part of the, the AD team in a while because, uh, I have been able to go. I was, I was working overtime. Right. My wife and kids were still going. And, you know, and they would ask, you know, where is it? Or I would send a text to the, 
like group chat, hey, I'm working, da 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 And first few times, I'd be like, you know, they'd respond, uh, oh, here, I can even read you, you know, what they're saying. Uh, so, uh, like, I, would, I would let them know, hey, guys, I won't be able to make it in tomorrow. Like, this is just one instance. Yeah. Like, my dad was in the ICU having what they think was a heart attack. All prayers appreciated. Out of this whole group, one person re responded, sorry to hear that, uh, Brother T. Sorry to hear that. I'll definitely keep on prayer. Next thing I know, a couple Sundays go by, I'm not able to go because, like I said, I'm working overtime. I'm out, I, I'm out of the group. They don't say nothing to me. They don't ask you what's going on. Uh, nothing. I just stop getting notifications all of a sudden. <clears throat> I'm looking down like, so, so I'm just out? Like, no, no, nothing? Right. Uh, that's one thing. Um, but not only that, that's just the AD group. I was, there was weeks where um, we had a long illness in my family. My wife got sick, I got sick. Kids, you know how it spreads, in a, especially in a small apartment. Uh, yeah. It was like one after another after another. We were all getting sick, just back to back to back. And so we weren't we weren't able to go to church. And during this time, they, they basically, you know, they took me out of the group chat. I'm not getting any notifications. I'm not hearing anything, so I can't really... You know, reach out to them. Right. Uh, when I was my own feelings at this point, I, I got a little of my feelings. I'm like, you know, the first week or two went by, nobody reached out to me and said, hey, how's it going? No, I was around. Three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, nothing. People, you know, we nobody's reaching out to us to even ask what's going on. Um, that starts bothering me. So I finally say something to my wife. I'm like, I'm like, you know, I hate saying this, but I feel hurt. Like, I feel like nobody really wants a relationship with us there, and I don't know why. And I was under the assumption that my wife, you know, wasn't dealing with this, that she had friends and this and that. Well, as soon as I said that, my wife just started breaking down and crying. And I was like, what's wrong? And she's like, she's like, I've been going through the same thing. She's like, I know there's there's groups of women there. They have group chats, and they go out every week. She's like, I don't get invited. Um, she's like, mm. <laughs> It just breaks my heart. Um, yeah, yeah. Recently, we had a, at, at a, uh, the homeschool, they had a homeschool, this Thanksgiving feast they yeah. had for the homeschool. Yeah, kids. I saw that. Yep. My wife was there serving, um, and my kids were there. And my, my wife said she saw uh, my kids. If you knew my kids take her, they're the nicest boys you'll ever meet in your right, life. Right, 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 like, right. They're the most friendly, just the su yeah. sweet, like, the purest souls you'll ever be. Right, right. Um, and I know I'm a dad, so I'm going to say that, but it's yeah, the truth. Yeah. Um, but my wife told me, she started praying, she was crying. She's like, she's like, I didn't want to even tell you this. She's like, but we're at the Thanksgiving feast. I see our, our sons, they're walking up to people trying to talk, and other kids literally get up and walk away from them. And they're just sitting there left by the there's hundreds and hundreds of kids. Yeah. And my, my three kids are sitting at a table by themselves. Jesus. Nobody will go over there. Jesus. Talk to them. Nothing. Jesus. And my wife, my wife's working, seeing that. She said she she had to go into the bathroom. She broke down in tears. Just seeing it. Just, and, it, you know, my kids, they internalize just like I do. But I hold, I hold a lot in. So when it comes out. I sound like an idiot like I do right now. No, I don't. Um, no, no, you don't, bro. No, you don't. Just, 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 no, no, you don't, bro. No, you don't. No, more and more of my kids are, yeah. are more like than I even know. Um, so, during all this, you know, when I finally made the decision, and this is still even before I saw your videos, uh, I made the decision we were going to take a break for a while. I was like, you know, there's some, maybe we need to take a break, take a step back, get into this word that we're not getting all the time. Yeah. Um, I was like, my wife was, you know, a little hesitant at first. She's like, you know, we, because, you know, we've been there long enough where the message has been indoctrinated us. You need to be here. Right. You need to be around right. people. And, and she's like, well, we need to be around like minded believers. And like I told her, I was like, I was like, the Bible says when there's two or more gathered, he's here. Yeah. I was like, are, are, are we not like minded believers? Wow. I was like, I was like, let's get into our word. Let's have church here for, for a while if that's what God's leading us to do. Uh, Let's get into the Bible, you know, whatever. And so we, my wife trusted me as a leader. She's like, and then, of course, telling me all the stuff she'd been dealing with, too, that I, I didn't even know. Wow. She'd been holding me. Um, we, so we decided to stay home for a while, 
like I said, weeks go by, nobody's reaching out. Uh, except for one person, uh, my, my friend I was telling you about. He's yeah. reached out a couple times. Yeah. Just, yeah. Hey, I'm just being real general stuff. Right, you know? right. <clears throat> Um, so, um, uh, so we're doing that, and then I talk to my kids, um, uh, so my, my son finally asked, well, we're not going to church. And, um, I told him, I was like, well, son, uh, I just feel like the Lord's leading us to, to really stay home for a little while and, and get into the, I will be like, get my son, so I can see him start tearing up. He's 11 years old. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can see the tears kind of welping up in his eyes a little bit, and I was like, son, what's wrong? And he was like, are we not ever going back? And I was like, I don't, I was like, son, honestly, I don't know. Um, I was like, but if we don't, I was like, we gotta, we gotta trust the Lord that he'll, he'll move us somewhere better. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And so at that moment, my son started bawling. Like, I've never seen him bawl before. And I was like, what's wrong? And he was like, I don't make friends easy. And I was like, what? I'm like, you're the, you're the, like, one of the coolest kids I've ever known. You mean you don't make friends easy? He's like, He's like, nobody ever wants to be our friend. And I only have a couple. He's like, I, I know, at least. And I was like, so what are you crying for? He's like, well, my friends are there. And I was like, well, what friends? And he's like, well, you know, John, I was like, do they hang around? He's like, well, no, that's what I'm saying. I don't, I'm not good at making, like, they have, the way they've been treated there by other kids and yeah. parents. And I'm like, there's reasons for it. I don't want to judge. People have been through stuff to have, you know, their thoughts on things. And so I can't judge their hearts, but it does affect my kids when, you know, he's sitting here telling me how much he wants friends and nobody there wants to be their friend at all. And he's just breaking down and, he thinks, and it's literally made him think there's something wrong with him. And, and he's scared to death. He's like, I can't go anywhere else. I, I can't make friends. <laughs> it's just, I'm like, no, it's not you. It's not like you. <laughs> so that bothered me. Yeah. And so Right around this time, all this is going on, I'm, I'm praying, I'm getting in the Word. I do see one of your videos. Um, I see Larnell. Actually, I got on, because I had been in church in, in a little bit. I got on uh, I got online, and I saw where Larnell had shared, um, he had shared the interview you did with, um, um, Delilah. Delilah, yes. Um, and I watched it, and, I, and honestly, when I first started watching it, um, I didn't know, I almost felt like wrong for watching it. I was like, should I even be looking? But then I'm thinking, I'm like, well, Arnell shared this. I was like, I, I, don't know. I, mean, I feel obligated to watch it. That's my brother. Yeah. Like, if my brother shared this, well, who am I to, to just ignore him? Uh, I was like, so I got to at least listen to, to what they're saying. And, you know, being in that church long enough, you know, the conversation he goes on. So I'm listening to her. And, of course, the first thing that comes in my head is Jesse. I'm like, oh. This is Jesse. Wow. Uh, wow. And I feel it coming in. I, and I, and I, but then I, the, the Holy Spirit, thank God, convicted me. He's like, no, let's keep listening. Mm. Keep listening. Mm. Yeah, keep listening. And the more I listen, the more it starts working on me. And uh, I told my wife, I'm like, you know what? Even if not, even if part of it's true, it's, it's too much. Right. Like, I was like, I know there's two sides to every story. There right. always is. Right. But unfortunately, in that church, you can't get the other side of the story. I was like, so, I know there's two sides to every story, but we're never going to get the other side. We're getting this side. Yeah. God gave us the side. He allowed it to happen for a reason. At this time, when I'm praying for some, for you know, for something. Yeah. And so I didn't even share that with my wife. Yeah, I just watched it first. Uh, that was later. Um. Well, then after that, I'm just going to be 100% honest. I, I saw, um, I was, when I first watched it, I couldn't even watch the whole thing. Because, like I said, I, I felt guilty and, like, you know, whatever. And so I started having second thoughts because I've been there, you know, so many years. And, uh, you know, my mind's been affected by it, you know? Right. Uh, I'm feeling guilty for watching it. I'm second guessing. Like, I don't know what this dude, like, your agenda is. Uh, I'm like, I don't know who, who this guy is. I've heard Pastor mention people online coming after him and, and him getting threats. So, you know, I'm like, I don't know who this guy is or what his agenda, but I know Arnell shared it too. So I'm like, I don't know, I was conflicted, right? Right, right, right. So, um, time goes by, and uh, later on, I'm at work, and uh, I'm on break real quick, and I, I, I see, I just like, you know what? Flip so, so somebody will check this dude out again. So I pulled up another one of your videos, and I see a video, uh, you're, uh, like, standing outside in a parking lot. Yeah. Uh, and you're like, come out, come out wherever you are. <laughs> <laughs> you seem real angry and, like, upset. And I'll be honest with you, at first, I was like, whoa, is this one of the, is this one of the dudes that's talking about is, like, threatening him? Yeah. And I was like, that, you know, just the first five seconds of it, I made a judgment. Right, right, right. 
Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Well, that, that's my bad, you know. Uh, but I did. I was like, I was just like, and it's kind of, you know, my first thoughts is like, oh man, this must be one of the guys, you know, that Pastor talking about coming after him. And I'm like, is he you know, like threatening the church? Is he, you know, whatever? And uh, so I turned it off because I was like, I don't know what to think now. Uh, and, and that's my bad for not listening to the whole thing. Mm. Uh, but, you know, like I said, my mind's been affected by all mm-hmm. this stuff. So right, right, right. A lot of confusion. Yeah. So, um, I watched, uh, um, another video, uh, uh, too. Well, anyways, after that, I reached out to, um, uh, one of the guys in the AV team. Um, uh, and to be honest, I, I texted him and I was like, oh, I saw the video you posted where it was our, our church service. Uh, but it was like all black screen, like somebody yep, was yep. recording on the phone. Yep. Oh, I saw that. I was at that service. Where we had gone down, it was one of my first weeks back. Wow. And I, just, I decided, all right, let's go back. Wow. So I did that service. Um, that was my first one I've been back to in forever. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> you wouldn't know it. Like, no, I really act like I'm being alive. It was just like, hey, what's up, man? But whatever, that's a whole different thing. Um, so I saw that video, and I, I'll be honest, at first it kind of freaked me out. Because so I was like, I hadn't watched enough of your videos at this point. I just saw that five minutes where you're yelling outside. And I, my mind, I'm convinced, you know, that was like almost a threat. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I see this video where you posted that, and I was like, I didn't see. I just saw it on YouTube, so I didn't see any context or anything. Right, right. <clears throat> and, I was like, and I was like, what is he doing? Like, is he trying to send a message like he's in here? I, I, I do all my little, you know, research and studying and stuff like that on Saturdays. I'm good. I'm good. Very high up. 
I'll just put his name out there. Uh, I saw brother Bryce Butler. Yeah. You know Bryce Butler. Yeah, yeah, he plays, he plays for the Cowboys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He uh, calls him pretty much like a son. He, he, I've heard him say that. He's like a, a second son to him. Um, from the time he got there, he was, you know, front row center. Of course. He gets his own entrance exit. Yep. Um, at the end of the service, we're all standing in a line to use the card reader to send stuff to pair offerings. Uh, they walk him in with security. Excuse me, y'all. He's got to he hurry. He's got to hurry. Cuss the line. You know, whatever. We're trying to get it. I'm like, you know what? He's not a huge celebrity, but he is a football player. And a lot of people really in the sport. So I can understand not wanting him to be, you know, just bombarded by people. I get that. I'm not going to hold that to him. But they, it did give the appearance like they were putting him on a, a pedestal very quickly. Because they are. Um, yeah, because they were. Yeah. But anyways, I tried to overlook all that, even though it bothered me. And I held on to it for a while, but whatever. Um, so, I'm sitting, you know, down, and I'm scrolling Instagram with my son, uh, you know, sitting in the bed next to me. And all of a sudden, I come across this post of uh, Brother Bryce, uh, where, uh, and you can see it, it's public. Um, you go on, on, on Bryce Butler's Instagram page, he has the latest two videos they have on there, is him doing a private workout with Colin Kaepernick. Now, if you know anything at our church, Pastor has gone at Kaepernick hard. Right. At, at heroes ever. He, he says all the time that he's being led by Jesse, a Muslim. He's a Muslim now. He's a Jesse. Uh, or he's, he's, he's following Jesse, so he's an Ahab. Uh, this man, he, oh, even Pastor, I found a post where I went back and looked. He posted where, uh, uh, a meme of Ka Colin Kaepernick where he, and he put, he's showing you exactly who he is. And it has a picture of Colin Kaepernick doing like the okay sign, you know, with the tans. Yeah. And, and then he put hashtag Illuminati. Wow. So that's been Pastor's view on Colin Kaepernick this whole time, right? But all of a sudden, I see Bryce on here posting a video of him working out with Colin Kaepernick. Now let me say, I, I had, no, and I made this very clear, I had nothing against him working out with him. That's a job. Right. We all have people of different religions everything we get to, you're going to work i get that i had no problem with that what i did have a problem with is in one of his videos the comment he put under it you know it, it's him working out with um Charles kaepernick and this is bryce butler's words you can go look on instagram and see it yourself he put we all speak the same language stay ready so we don't have to get ready what to think at kaepernick seven for sharing his platform Putting me in front of scouts to be looked at in a time where calls aren't coming in from teams for whatever reason. All this is happening while he's ultimately doing the same thing. Should definitely be in the league. Great time having fun. Da, 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 da. So, in the five years I've been there, I've been preached to over and over and over how you can't use the world's platform for, for your for your game. Right. And he is, he's using a, a specific person that pastors called Illuminati Muslim extremist. He's using him and it's openly on a public platform thanking him for his platform. It's very, very contradictory right. to what we're hearing every week. Exactly. Exactly. So that's not my wedding. So I look. I, I comment on, on his post. Honestly, at this time, I'm not on Instagram enough to know how it works. I didn't even know you could DM people on Instagram. I'm not, you know, whatever. Right, right, so right. So I have to comment, which I have a right to do. You put this out publicly. Right. I have a right to comment on That's right. That's right. Um, so I just put in the comment, uh, let me see if I can find it, because me being dumb later after I get to Why can the enemy uh, after all this? And I ended up deleting comment, which I wish I kind of wouldn't have now. Um, but, uh, like I said, I've been working through stuff. Yeah. Um, but basically, I can't find it. Uh, but basically, in the comment, all I said was, I was like, are you serious, Bryce? Like, like really trying to get back in the league by using Colin Kaepernick? I was like, first of all, he's been blackballed by the league. Like, let's not kid ourselves. Like, right. Like, he has been blackballed. Whether you agree with what he did or not, he's been blackballed for it. I was like, so do you really think trying to use his platform is going to help you back into the league? Like, that's just that's just not smart business on my, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, and I, that's what I told him. I was like, it just, I mean, I don't think that's very smart, bro. Um, and uh, I was like, and I put on there, and aren't you a Christian? Didn't your pastor, like, didn't our pastor say that he's a Muslim? And, uh, and, uh, and 
anti antichrist, as he put it. I was like, so, so are you still with us or something to that effect? You know? Um, well, then that, you know, I'll leave it alone. I'm thinking, you know, Bryce Butler, he's maybe said two words to me the whole time I've, I've been in that church. Um, I didn't think you'd even know who I was or, or even care about my calling, honestly. Um, well, the next thing I know, that, that didn't bother me enough. Well, if that didn't bother me enough, next thing I know, I look up and I see where Jay Bryant wiped the post. Mm. <laughs> Our youth pastor mm. wiped, wiped the post of him thanking, the, according to pastor, thanking this Illuminati Muslim leader for his platform. The same pastor who preaches all the time how you can't use the world's platform, the devil's platform, for God again. He talks about all the time about the sacrifices he had to make and how right. we all have to make sacrifices. Right. It's going to cost you this. Is it worth it? Da, da, da. He's putting it on Instagram, thanking him for his platform. And our youth pastor, who is pastor's right hand man, is, is liking the post. That bothered me. I was like, not that I have an issue with Kaepernick. I have my own thoughts that I had to keep to myself I, uh, about it. Um, you know, I, I don't know, but uh, it's just the fact that it's so contradictory to what you preach. Right. That's right. the problem. Exactly. Um, I started praying about it, and uh, I'm like, you know what? I want to say something, uh, but I do want to do this the right way. And so I pray, and uh, and the Lord led me to um, the scripture. Uh you know, funny thing, scripture helps sometimes, but um, <laughs> I also think I took this one a, probably a little little bit out of context, uh, too. <clears throat> but, uh, I was trying to do things the way you're supposed to do it in church, but now I'm learning more and more. This isn't a real church, so maybe some of these same rules don't apply. Um, but I went to uh, Matthew 18. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matthew 18, uh, chapter 15, where it says, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, you have, uh, you have gained your brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And, it, and if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it, tell it unto the church. But if he neglected it to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. Right. And I'm like, okay, so let me go to him privately. I don't have Jay Bryant's number. Been there five years. Never given me his number. Uh, barely ever talked to him. We talked a couple times. He went to my son's birthday party when we very first moved down there. He barely talked to me when I was there, when he was there even. They literally, just, it was at an arcade. They came and played the arcade games and mm -hmm. ate the birthday cake and pretty much. Uh, didn't really say much to me, but we were walking for him to come, I guess. But that was about the extent of our relationship, honestly. Um, but, uh, so I reached out to, to him. I'm like, you know, I don't want to do this the way the word says. But like I said, now I'm seeing, you know, more that that's how things are supposed to be done in, in church. But I'm seeing more and more this isn't a real church. But right. anyways, I don't want to do it the right way. Right. So I go and, um, I send, uh, I send Brother Jay Brian a, a message. A, a, I figured out that, that you can send direct messages on, on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh. Let me, let, me, let me shoot my message then. So I said, I'm, I'm kind of new to all this. I didn't know. And uh, I'll read you the message I, I'll send him right here. Hey, real quick, real, real, real quick, what was the date? What was the date of that post between him and uh, uh, between uh, uh, Bryce and, and and Colin Kaepernick depict? Do you have it? Because I'm on his I'm on his IG right now, and I'm. Um, oh, just if you're looking, Jay Ryan apparently unliked the post now, but I had a screenshot where he, where he liked it though. You do you, uh, you so hold, you you do have that? Yeah, I do that. I need, I need you, I need you to run me that. I need you to run me that, bro. I, I just want to see what what comment was made by Bryce and uh uh you know the one the picture with Calvin Kaepernick and all that kind of stuff. Oh, well, 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 right, so I go on Bryce's Instagram, um, and the the first two videos you're gonna see on there, um, it's it's two videos. Two of videos. him working out with Calvin Kaepernick. If you go to the second video, oh, I see it, I see it, I see it, I see it, I see it. Okay. Well, now read his comment underneath. And if you look, uh, it does show liked, liked by B Attitude Designs. That's the basis sister. So Jay Brown removed his like, uh, but there was a, there's some others on there. I don't know if he actually removed his like or not. It, maybe you can click on it and it's still there. Let me see. Uh, no, I don't see the like on there. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. 
Okay, uh, yeah, see, it was dated uh, November 25th. Yeah, yeah. So, I send, um, I send Brother J. Brian a message, because I'm trying to go to him privately, like, I, you know, thinking the word is telling me to do, right? Right. Uh, and his defense, he's very cordial for, for all this, um, but he admits no wrong uh, at all. Of course not. Um, of course not. Well, I'll read to you, uh, if you don't mind. I know yeah, I yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, I put, hey, bro, this just wanted to hit you up because my son was sitting with me as I'm scrolling IG and he sees that you like the post of Bryce Butler working out with and even thanking Kaepernick. He even tagged Ka you even er, Bryce even tagged Kaepernick in the post. So then I try to explain to my son that Bryce is just trying to get back in the league any way he can. But then my son says, didn't Pastor say Kaepernick is a Muslim? I just think it's a bad look, bro, and introduces a lot of confusion to a message that, to me, so far has been so pure. I saw another post, you know, like the Bryce's, where he was even thanking Kaepernick for allowing him to use his platform. And so then I asked him, so is it okay to use a Muslim anti-Christian's platform for money and fame in football, but not in music and movies? Mm. Mm. I was like, these are the type of questions I'm having to answer to my kids now. And I know many more of our youth follow you and Bryce online. So what message does that send to them? And I put, I love you, bro, and I love all you do, but I have to say something. You know, I'm trying to be respectful. Uh, is, is, you know, I, I, I try to do everything respectful. And, right. You know, right. Man. Right. So, <laughs> it's a, it's a fence. He replied really quickly to me. Um, he hits me back. Absolutely no issue with your question at all, bro. Bryce is my friend and a believer. I want to see him employed. I work for atheists, Muslims, Catholics, and even professing devil worshippers. We can't escape that. In the world, not of it. Now, keep in mind, I very specifically said I had no issue with the workout. I had an issue with you using his platform. Right. And openly thanking him in public. That sends a contradictory message. Right. That's what I said. Right. We switched him because he's having a problem with him working with him. That's right. never what happened. I work, with, I work with two Muslims. Right. My job every day. Right. Like, we can help what we have to work with. Right. Uh, I've never had a problem with that, but that's what he's twisting it into me saying. Right. Which I never, very specific to what I said. Right. I'll keep going. I'll keep going. He said, uh, I support Bryce trying to get his job back. Before Kaepernick became a media darling, he was a Muslim. Would he be able to throw Bryce the ball on the same team? Furthermore, the league itself is anti-Christ. The NFL isn't Christian or advocate for Christian beliefs. Okay, whatever. As far as a bad, mm, this is what got me. As far as a bad look, fortunately, I'm able to serve the youth and build a healthy, integral relationship with them. I trust that they they know where I stand and wouldn't compromise and consider me liking an ID post of a personal friend as compromise of any kind. That bothered me because I'm like, well, is my son not a, a part of the youth? Because it, it did bother him, and he did have questions. But whatever. Uh, so he's just negating, I guess, my kids. Um, then he says, what was the dumbest analogy he could have gave me to? Um, I'm sorry for being rude. But no, 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 it's, you, 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 no, 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 let's talk, let's go. He goes, the gas stations are majority, majority owned by Muslims. Oh, good lord. I gas, up, I gas up my vehicle weekly. Most corporations that we patronize daily are anti-Christ. My support of a friend doesn't interfere with who I am as a believer. Again, he's trying to twist my words into me having a problem with him working out with him. That was never my issue. So then I applied back. And keep in mind, like, while I'm doing this, I'm still, you know, I'm still being worked on. I don't know what to, you know, what to do at this point. I'm still, like, half of me is like, I'm wrong for even questioning leaving the church. Part of me is like, you know, the Lord was working on me. So you'll notice through my comments, you can tell I'm still struggling. I'm wanting to give them the benefit of the doubt, right? Right, right. On my own as I'm reading my comments. I go, um, thanks for the quick response. These are just the questions I had to answer with my son. So it did introduce a little confusion for him at least. But thanks for sharing your thought process. As far as the gas and employer analogy, I just feel there's a difference between going to work and doing a job or going to a gas pump and getting gas than going on a, and I put all caps, public form and openly thanking someone who has openly and publicly lived in direct contradiction to what we as believers stand for. 
But thanks again for sharing your thoughts, and I hope I didn't offend. I'm still learning myself. Love you, bro. He replies back. Love you, bro. No offense taken at all. Thank you for talking to me about it. But let's continue the dialogue soon. We can both learn some, something, God willing. We definitely had different perspectives, and that's okay. No, it's not okay. Thank no, you. No, no, no. you're preaching this. So Thank you. Adam, every it's not okay to have differences here. Right. We need to be, we need to be a one mind on this. That's right. He um, goes, talking won't bring that clear, uh, won't bring the clarity that a face to face would bring. I reply back. I 100 percent agree. I love and respect you so much, and would love the chance to sit and talk and ask questions. But I also know how busy everyone is, so I've always felt guilty for even taking a minute of any of uh, any of the church leaders' time. But I would love that. And then, for the first time in five years, he gives me his phone number and goes, shoot me a text. Now, keep in mind, after this, if you go look, after this, you know, what seems like a peaceful conversation, right? Mm -hmm. You go look, go look on Jay Brown's page and see who he follows on Instagram. You won't find me, you won't find me on his friend list anywhere. But, like, he follows, he follows all these other people in the church. Still, to this day, even after this, he doesn't friend me or follow me. I, I, I can't be any more gentle or, or nice about it or try. Right. And he says, let's have a great conversation uh, face to face. Uh, and so I shoot him a text. And I'm like, uh, I'm just about to text. That's real short and sweet. I'm just like, uh, uh, it's way back here. Where to go? Uh, anyways, I shoot him a text. I'm like, hey, this is again, whatever. Uh, I was like, I can't, uh, you know, I really look forward to actually being able to sit down and talk with you. Da -da -da -da. And he just replies back, um, um, what do you say? Like, the way he worded it was just kind of straight to me. Basically, like, like, I'll deal with you later or something to that effect or something. Wow. Okay. Uh, not like threatening, like, at yeah, all. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm friendly with you. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to be respectful and be friendly about this. Right. But at the same time, I'm trying to live up to what we've all been preached so heavily about for years, right, you know? Right, And I'm looking at all these contradictions, and I'm like, what is this about? Um, so then next thing I know, after I talk to him, all of a sudden Bryce Butler pops up in my in my direct messages. I'm like, what? <laughs> so obviously, obviously he saw my comment or Jay Bryan talked to him. I got a feeling Jay Bryan talked to a lot of people in the church, mm -hmm. because a lot of them, nobody's talking to me now. Right. And, uh... You can see there's only a few of the church members who still follow me on Instagram. But in their defense, I'll give them if they're on a social media pass, they might not even be on there. So, I, I, you know, I'll try to give them a pass on that one. Mm. But I know a few of them are. Right. Um, and so Bryce Butler hit me up. This is exactly what Bryce Butler told me in my, in my DM. He goes, is this ABC? I'm going to be gracious to you because you're a church brother of mine. And I think you said that. And I think uh, you said all that out of love and not out of hate. But my man, it was a workout. I can work out with whoever I want. Christian, atheist, Muslim, Hindu, or Trump. We're all football players. I never heard you say, and this is, oh, this is what really made me mad. Like, this really, really made me mad. He goes, I never heard you saying that to me when I played for the Cowboys. Huh? When, when were you posting this when you were playing with the Cowboys? When were you working out with Colin Kaepernick when you were playing with the Cowboys? <laughs> he for his for his platform. Uh. Because he made the one time I met him at church, so I actually talked to him. We were at a heroes meeting. I was sitting in front row, and he came in super late, uh, you know, because he's coming from practice or whatever, and he sat right next to me. Now, keep in mind, I am, I, I grew up a Cowboys fan. I always have been. I'm mm. pretty bad at Cowboys fan, probably to a fault. Um, I'm honestly pretty much done with them now. I'm like, <laughs> I already said, if Garrett comes back next year, I'm, I'm getting rid of all my stuff. I'm not supporting him. <laughs> but, but that's all another thing. Yeah. I'm there, you know, the heroes, and I got my, I got a Cowboys hat on, and a Cowboys shirt, or whatever. And he sits next to me, and he's you know, he's nice. He doesn't say much. He's like, yeah, we listen to the heroes. But after we're, after heroes, you know, I'm surprised about well, he's a Cowboy player, so of course I don't want to talk to him. So I'm sitting around him, and uh, I think maybe you want to know what was there. I don't remember. Uh, it's quite a few people. And he's all talking about, uh, you know, being a cowboy and what it's like and, uh, you know, dealing with people and this and that. And they were like, somebody asked, uh, one of the brothers asked, like, well, 
you get a lot of like like real fan I bet you get a lot of real fanatics like like trying to talk to you all the time because they're trying to blow you da 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 and he's like yeah and he says something to the like yeah most of them look like most of them look like this dude and points to me oh what <laughs> what does that mean I don't really know what you look like so apparently that will be taken as an insult yeah cause I guess cause I was wearing a lot of cowboy stuff wow and he told you like, um, he, I guess he told you like I was gonna just like I was idolizing him or something. Dang. Like, bro, I'm, I've been a cowboy fan since since I was born. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like you're, like you're, and at this point in my life, I'm there trying to get the word. I don't care about the, the cowboys. Like, right. like you're cool. I just want it'd be cool to meet you, but I was, I just it was kind of offensive. I don't know if you meant it that way or not, but it's mm. kind of offensive. Um, uh, they all just kind of laughed it off, you know, like as a joke, whatever. I, I. I Kaepernick? 
he calls him, he, I know he says, he, I, know, I, I remember him saying he's a Muslim, he called him a Muslim. But, but, oh, okay. Well, 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 he called him the Antichrist, you know, because if he's Muslim, he's an Antichristian, so he, you know, kind of Did he say that it in sermons, or did he say that in his rants? Well, uh, it's probably mainly in, like, heroes meetings and stuff. I don't okay. think any of that on tape. Uh, I wish I could find where he did. But he did publicly post a, a meme. I can share that with you. Please, um, please. Uh, I found I went back after all this. I went and found it, um, where Pastor posted a, a meme of, um, of Colin Kaepernick, and it says on there, uh, let me get back to it. So, this is on Pastor's Twitter. Uh, on, on Pastor G's Twitter. I'm sorry I keep calling him Pastor. It's, it's, it's good. Added. Yeah, whatever. It's going to be hard to break. I'm not trying. Uh, well, I see where he posted this. I, I can't remember the date because I took a screenshot of it. Um, but this is what he said. He, had, he put a picture of Colin Kaepernick doing the OK sign. Uh, and my screenshot, I couldn't fit all that in, so you can't see the little hand sign that he's doing, but whatever. Um, but you can see the picture of Colin Kaepernick, and you can see it on that, on, on G's, uh, Twitter if you want to go dig deep enough to find it. Um, and he put, this is what, what, uh, Pastor G said. He said, folks worried about skin color, but they should be worried about who's behind it. Cap showing exactly who started it. Hashtag Illuminati. Hmm. So that's our pastor, Colin Kaepernick Illuminati. Hmm. Brian, who pastor calls a son, and a personal friend, Jay Ron, you heard him, that's a personal friend of his. Right. Um, at, at the kids, well, uh, my, one of the kids meetings, my son went to, uh, they actually showed them a video he made where he went to um, training camp with Bryce and got to go all over the facilities when he was at the Cowboys and interview them and all that other stuff. So they they idolize him, dude. Like, you can tell. They, they, they're putting him up on a level that's, you know, different than everybody else. Mm -hmm. They're like, yeah, preach a different word than what we're all getting preached. Clearly, if, if Pastor G calls him Illuminati, Muslim anti-Christian, how is it okay for Bryce to then thank him for his platform? Right. On a public forum for everybody to see. God's not the author of confusion. Right. I'm confused. My son's confused. Like, we're confused. <laughs> and then, so then, I, I, I'll keep, sorry, I'm jumping around. I'll go back to the message. I was like, if you ever really want to just talk, just call me. Uh, get my number. I was like, I know I'm just a nobody, but, uh, but I'm always available to help with anything, even if it's just a prayer. Love you, bro, and no hate intended at all. And then he, he replies back, tell the little man I said what's up. I uh, talking to my son, I guess. Mm -hmm. He said, but yeah, man, that was the only way I could get in front of scouts through the workout. I keep mind, you know the message has to preach is, we all have to make sacrifices. Right. No, 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 no. Right. No, I said you have to be a football player. Like, nobody said you have to be in the NFL. If you leave the NFL today, he's got opportunities that most people don't have. Exactly. You a four-year college degree, you've got media connections, you've got all kinds of different opportunities for you to go make money. You don't need to use football, but you don't want to give up that fame is what it really is. That's clear to me now. Exactly. Is what um, but he said, yeah, man, that was the only way I could get in front of scouts through the workout. Only one team has called since I got released. So that was a great play for me. I would do it a million times over. I think where you're getting confused is hearing everything that G says about Cap and then thinking me going to his workout puts me in the same boat as him. It doesn't. I never said that. It's all about him using his platform. That's all I said. Right. Then he goes, I flew in for a workout and then flew out. We wasn't in there talking religion or talking about the kneeling stuff. We were all there to try and impress some scouts. And this is what got me. Uh, then he goes on to say, I talk to G every day. And we talked about this as well. He ain't saying nothing you're saying. <laughs> That's what that's on me. Wow. That's what that's on me. And then he goes on to say, I've always been taught not to compromise Christ for anything that I do. Well, then what are you doing? Um, I didn't do that with, with the workout, just catching some balls. And one of the young homies got signed after the workout. So I guess what you said about being around him will mess us up is incorrect. We can agree to disagree. All right, well, first of all, the guy who got signed got signed to the practice squad of the Redskins. Like, if that's the goal, good for him. But he ain't going to be around long. It's the practice squad. Those guys come and go all the time. I know how football works. Exactly. Uh, he said, and then he goes, real proud of that. He might not get back in, but I will. And it puts a little emoji with the sunglasses on. 
Okay. Um, I'm like, okay, whatever. And uh, so I replied back. And I was like, like I said, bro, I'm still learning every day. And Lord knows I've been wrong before, and I'll be wrong again. Just trying to make sense of it all to my kid. And maybe I should have just hit you up directly. But honestly, I didn't know I could send messages on here till today. And never thought you would really get too sense about what, some, what someone like me had to say about anything. But thank you for taking the time to talk and try to clear that up for me and my son. I don't get to talk to Pastor G very often. I don't even have his number. I know how busy he is, so I always feel guilty for even taking a minute of his time. All the knowledge I have is what I get from his messages on Sundays and my Bible. So sometimes I might be a little slower to understanding than others who do have that luxury. God bless you, bro. Please know I have nothing but love for you and my church fan. And he replies back. Yeah, I actually look into my comments, LOL, because I look for people I know. Yeah, because I was like, dang, my man couldn't just send me a message? Why you hit my comments like this? But all good, man. I have nothing to love. Nothing's changed. Now, keep in mind, and then I, I, I don't want to tell him, thanks, bro. I'm, keep in mind, I'm still struggling with things at this point. And so, I don't know why I felt convicted to go delete the comment, but I did. Uh, and I was like, deleted the comment, because I felt like he reached out to me privately, so maybe I shouldn't put it out publicly. But I'm still, you know, I'm still trying to get an understanding on the right way to handle this. Like, that's why I'm talking to you now. I'm so confused on the next step. Okay. Um, so, so, so let, let's just do this real quick. Let's do this because I, I know, I know you got stories for days on that, and that's that's a, that's cool. My question to you though is, what made you hit me up, and why are you deciding to leave? And is your wife on board with that decision? Um, Those three well, questions. I don't know what decision I make now. Um, okay. Because I talked to her, not just because she's online. Like, yeah, I got you. I got you. Yeah, yeah. I had a discussion, told her, you know, she's seeing what's going on, uh, and I told her that some of the stuff that, like I said, I told you before, I, I finally broke down to her and told her a lot of the things that had been bothering me for a while that I never shared with her before. Because, mm -hmm. you know, we're all full of real stuff, zero stuff. That's, that's for the man, that's not for the one. Well, I tell her some of the stuff that I hear at Heroes and how, like, I'm seeing this, like, pure contradiction right out in the open. And not only am I seeing it, but people in leadership are liking it. Uh, I'm, and I tell her how that's bothered me, and that's when my wife, uh, that's when we had the conversation, and she just started breaking down, telling me all the stuff that she's been going through, that she's been holding on to, and not telling me. What is she going to tell me about all the stuff that's been happening with the kids that I didn't even know about? Wow. So we all just started flooding out after that. And then that's when we prayed. Uh, you know, we're praying in tears, and I'm like, you know what? If all this is going on, this can't be of God. I was like, I've been in the Bible at least more now than I ever have been. And God is, I keep coming back to the same scripture. God is not the author of confusion. I was like, and, and throughout all this stuff, even like before the message, yeah, we, you know, it helps save us. It helps, it helps our marriage, at least, if, you know, if we're in that time. But like I told him, like I told my wife, that's not his message. That's, that's, the Lord's message that he's used and twisted in a lot of ways. I'm seeing that now. Um, but the part that saved us, or at least, you know, helped bring us closer to getting saved, that's not G. Craig's. That's God's. That's his word. G. He might have used G. Craig for a time to spread that word, because maybe, like I told her, maybe he felt like, you know, G. Craig had the, the personality, had the platform, had the, you know, whatever that needed to be used for that time to spread, you know, the, the truth that's in his word. Right. But, that, but that doesn't make it G. Craig's word. Right. That's still the Lord's word. Right. I was like, if he's going to mix in all this other stuff with it, and now he's openly contradicting with his leadership even, openly contradicting what he tells us, like, that's confusion. And God's not the author of confusion. Right, right. And then, that's why I told my wife, I was like, I was like, I didn't even want to show you this, uh, but I came across these videos. <laughs> and it's right after uh, that. And, uh, and so, like I told you, the first time I watched the video, it made me nervous. So after all this stuff with Bryce and Jay Ron, I decided to go back and actually listen to what you were saying a little bit more, right? Okay. I'm like, let me see what he's actually talking about, because maybe I've been wrong about everything. Been wrong before. I am not, I have no problem admitting when I'm wrong. Right. Uh, I never have. I'm not a prideful person. Uh, if anything, I struggle more on the other side uh, with my with my confidence, and I struggle with pride. But that's all. That's a me issue. Uh, 
Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, I told, so I was like, I've been watching a couple of these videos, and uh, I told her about the interview I saw you do with Delilah. And I, I asked my wife, I was like, do you remember this girl? And my wife's like, vaguely, I remember her face. I don't remember talking to her much, because I think it was at the old building. And I was like, yeah, it probably was. We were at the old building. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. And she was like, but I do remember seeing her face. I was like, yeah, me too. I, I remember. I was like, well, she's out here saying a lot of stuff. <laughs> and so we start watching. And, uh, especially my wife, you know, uh, she, you know, she's being a woman. She's, she's getting emotional about it. Because it's emotional. Uh, and she's like, and she said the same thing. She's like, you know, we want to give them everybody the benefit of the doubt. She's like, well, you know, same thing. I'm like, I'm telling her, you know, there's two sides to every story. Da -da -da -da. She's like, yeah, uh, yeah, we don't know. Da -da 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 -da. I was like, but, I was like, but, how do we get the other side of the right. story? Right. I was like, do you have pastor's number? Do you, like, can you reach out? And she's like, no. I was like, I right, we go to then. And, and we know how this place works. The second we try to get an answer, we're going to be booted. Like, I was gone a couple Sundays, and they group, they kicked me out the group chat for the AV team. You know, I had to work. Right. Like, you think about going to go to them with a question like this, they're going to just sit down and have the conversation? I just don't feel like that's what would happen. Right. Uh, so what do we do? Like, and I was like, I'll tell you what we do. We pray. We get into this word. And, and you know, let's just take a break for a while. And so that's what we decided to do. And then we started watching more videos. And then I saw the one. Um, I haven't seen all your videos still, because, you know, I'm busy, too, uh, but I saw the one you do with uh, Clemente Sosa's wife, mm -hmm. and that just broke my heart, um, and I had to keep fighting against what has been pushing me so much, because, like, when I first started watching it again, first thing that came to my, my mind, because I've been, you know, doctor, I'm like, oh, Jesse, right. she's clearly happy, uh, you know, how can you thank a man for challenging your husband? Exactly what I, what I went through. I was like, mm -hmm. she's making this thing for your husband. And then the Holy Spirit convicted me and was like, no, keep listening. Hear her story. Like, she's your sister. You owe it to her to listen to her. Come on. So I'm like, I'm like, okay, let's just keep listening. And so I listened and the Lord spoke to me and I've heard Pastor Good G say it a million times. How can you have a Jesse without a Ahab? And so I'm like, okay, so even if that's the case, it's a Jesse, whatever. It's because Ahab. It always happens. So what's it, but Ahab is lifted up in the church. Like <laughs> <laughs> my mother passes on Ahab man still. Wow. <laughs> so I was like, and my wife was like, I'm just, she was like, I'm so confused. I was like, I was like, you know what? That's exactly the problem. Right. God is not the author of confusion. That's oh, right. I'm so sorry. That's right. I was like, he's not. I was like, if we're this confused about this many things, then this ain't church. Come on, bro. Come on. I was, like, I was like, and we can't even go talk to people and ask for understanding? That's their job. Right. And, and then more and more just started floating out of me and stuff I've been holding on about the DVDs and selling the DVDs and telling people the heroes when they ask questions. Bro, you need to get part four. You need to get part three. But don't offer to give it to them. You tell them to go buy it. These are people who move from out of state. A lot of them are living in their cars and their hotels. I know, I know multiple people. You know these people are struggling. You're pulling up the church in a Ferrari and telling people to buy DVDs. How dare you? Right. So, so do you understand now why I'm coming for this dude's neck? Yes, I do. I do. And do you understand, and do you understand why I am so aggressive and I'm so, uh, I guess you could say, so hell-bent, bro? on taking him down and I'm talking about taking him down ultimately from a ministerial standpoint. Not 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 physical violence, but from a ministerial spiritual standpoint. And if you need this and if you need the scriptures, I can provide them to you so you can provide to your wife. Because uh, uh, so you know, I wouldn't even need them. because uh, it'd probably be a lot of the same scriptures past for Jesus in the past for going after other people. Uh, so uh, and for him to do it, how is that not okay for you <laughs> Exactly. 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 Now, I, now you I, do. I, I try to be a logical. I'm, I am a logical person. I am a thinker. I right. think. Right. And I, I try to think, and I, I'm very slow to move. That's why you know you can even tell in my messages. I'm, I'm very hesitant because I want to do things yeah. at my own pace. I want to do 
be able to think. Right. So what made you? So what made you hit me up then? Because last night, you know, yesterday I said, "Hey man, you know, uh, I'd love to talk to you." And you say, "Well, you know, you're not really sure yet." And I said, "Well, man, cool." I said, "But here's my number in case you do." And then, then this morning when I got up this morning, I'm an early riser, my military, you know, former military cat. I saw your, I saw your message, you know. But I was, man, when you hit me up at ten thirty, I was, I was already knocked out, bro. I was already knocked out. I figured that's why I didn't even want to call you. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, but no, 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 no offense. I'm just saying I was already knocked out. So when I woke up this morning, I saw it. I said, "Wow!" I said, "Okay, Lord, you know." And I didn't. And then, and you being, a, and then you being a member, almost out, out the door of ABC. I said, "Okay, Lord, you know that maybe you know." And I, I know God is. I know God is bringing people out of there. That that much I do know. And that much I do know. Lonel has come out because of the videos, and, and and it has nothing to do with me, dog. You know what I'm saying? Nothing to do with me. I'm just a tool, just like everybody else is. But I want to be the most faithful tool in the master's hands as possible. Um, I get, go ahead. Yeah. So so my 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 only agenda and only goal, bro is to rescue and help those come out of that hellhole and to be and to be spiritually liberated and set free from the stronghold of manipulation, intimidation, bullying, gaslighting, and all the host of other, you know, d demonic uh, uh, things that this man has taught and is doing under the guise of truth. Because if you're not, if you don't know your body, you are, you are, you are, you are prey. You are you are a prey for G. Craig Lewis, and he thrives off of ignorance. He thrives off of gullibility. He thrives yep. off of weakness. Yep, and I was guilty of it. I was guilty of it. Uh, I can read you. Uh, and this is one of the reasons I was hesitant and wanted to wait is because, like I said, I do still have someone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I still communicate with who I want to help too, and um, so I want to do it. You know. In, in a way that, you know, I know this dude, so right. I'm trying to gentle with him, you know, right. with it. And I know that he's listening to Pastor Slim, so I know he's not on social media. He's not going to hear any of the stuff you're saying right now. Like, he's not. He's not going to hear it. So, I texted him, because I care about him. Because uh, this has been one of the only people who's been consistently, like, in communication and friendly with me since I've been in the church five years. Yeah. Uh, this is the dude who was living in his car when he moved down here. Uh, trying to save up enough to get a place to bring his family down. Uh, you know, he's been, you know, so me and him have a lot of things in common. He knows what I went through to come down here. I know what he's been through. We're, you know, we, as close as I've been to anybody in right. the church. So is he, is I'm he, not, is he separated from his family now and his family together? No, he's not. And that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm so hesitant. I'm trying to, wow. I'm trying to bring him to the light. Wow. So when, when I know he's not online listening to anything right now, um, I have to do it through direct communication, and I have to be very careful on how I do it because people have been brainwashed. I'll just say it: mm -hmm. if I'm not if I'm not gentle enough with it, it's gonna scare him, and he'll like to communicate. I know that. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm about him, so I want to do it. The, you know, in a way, I want to help him. Is he black so, or white? He's black, bro. I'm the only me and the only white dudes in that church. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Uh, which I have no problem with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I feel you, I feel you, I feel you. I just wanted to know. I wouldn't be in there five years if I did. Right, 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 right. Um, but, um, so, give me one second. I gotta move this car. I'm trying to. I, I, when I went to, when I went to visit, uh, when I went to visit that church, actually, Fred Price Jr. and I are, are, are good friends. Right, I was about to tell you, um, that's what really ultimately led, led me to reach out to you. Uh, late last night after, uh, Okay. Um, years ago? Yeah, called War. Yes, and I just saw the way that you were able to have an open conversation and dialect with him. And it just showed me that that's something I've never been able to have in five years at this, so, at this church. And I'm like, so if this dude's willing to sit and actually have a dialogue and talk, like, I've got to at least give him a, a shot. But if Brett Price is willing to sit down with you and talk, who am I to to deny you, you know. Uh, I, I was like, and y'all both seem so respectful, and you, you know, you both make your points, and and you know, and I just appreciated seeing that because it's not something you see at ABC, right? It's just. And, and by so that, and by the way, he didn't want me to meet. He didn't want Fred to meet with me either. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure he didn't. 
Yeah. Anyone want to be made up? Study you talking about now? This, this stuff now. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what? I, here's what happened. So this is what I did. So when I, um, and I'm about two and a half months into this thing now. Uh, yeah. So let me let me just, let me explain to you real quick what set it off. What set it off was was was, was Craig's attack on Kanye. Okay. Uh, that was the straw that broke the camel's back for me. I've always had differences with with Craig's teaching, but what I did was I tried to I tried to I guess you could say pick my battles until until I say you know what this is what I'm gonna plant my flag on I'm dying on this hill you know what I'm saying uh, because I was friends with T Time Mafia before he decided to leave and other people. I, I've always wondered what happened to T Time. I've never been told what happened to him. He I left. He left. Know. He left for the same reasons why other people had left because of Craig. Craig is a bully and he thought he was gonna try to punk and bully T Time and T Time ain't that dude so T Time sent him out. Simple, simple, simple as that. It's, it's simple, simple as that. It was simple as that, man. It was nothing. I mean, he, he, that, like, 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 like Jay Bryant is trying to be Craig's right hand man. T Time was okay. He saw stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so him, uh, Tim Meekins, Tim Meekins is is a uh, is G Craig's cousin. He screwed over him, and that's his family. You know what I'm saying? So if you screw up your own family, then a person that ain't your family, ain't your blood, they don't have a, they don't have a snowball's chance in hell to to, to 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 deal with you. You know what I'm saying? So um so anyway, so what what caused the what caused this whole campaign, if you will, against G Craig, this whole mute G Craig Lewis, you know, hashtag that I've been putting out, is because of how how hypocritical and how contradictory G Craig Lewis has been. And it's been it's been it's been he's been consistently inconsistent for years. And people have, yeah, yeah. So, so people have yet to to challenge him to the to the effect to where it is now. And again, this has nothing to do with me. This is just God's sovereignty and allowing this now to come to full fruition. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's in the dirt. You can't challenge him, like, because first of all, we're all taught here to respect your past and this and that. So none of us want to be overly aggressive towards them, but at the same time, you don't even have the access to this dude unless you're, you know, in the inner circle. Yeah. And, and that's my point. So, so I'm like, you don't see Jesus like that. You see what I'm saying? You don't see Jesus like that. You don't see the apostles like that. Paul himself said, "Man, we made ourselves not only we, we we didn't just open up our hearts to you. We opened up our very lives to you." He told it to that's not in church because you you've been very precious to us. So Jesus, although Jesus had. The multitudes, he had, you know, the disciples, and then he had the inner three. He did not have this attitude where people, he could not be approached. You follow what I'm saying? He didn't have this attitude where he could not, he could not have had questions asked and answered of him. So, you, if you want to look at a teacher, that's the master teacher. Craig is not a teacher. Craig is a tantalizer. Craig likes to entertain. And he uses corny, whack jokes as his base for preaching. I'm like, bro, you are not an expositor. You do not know how to exegete the scriptures. And everything you say, for the most part, if it's not fact-checked, it's garbage. It's trash. And so... And so when you challenge him on that kind of stuff, what happens is when you make a public statement about Craig, it's one thing when he says that everybody's cool with it. But the nanosecond you say something about him publicly, his goons come out. Like him, like, 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 like pull out this, me and Jay Bryan, I, I've been knowing that dude for, for, for about f five, six years, right? Maybe a little bit longer. Like maybe a little bit longer. I've checked him about stuff. You see what I'm saying? So when he tried to come at me publicly, I had to sun that dude. I had to straight up clown him. I'm like, bro, we ain't, we ain't about to play this game, bro. You know, you know what it is. You know what time it is with me. So, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I'll drink, I'll drink. Say again, say again. What's, what's that? I said, what did Jay Brown do? I'm just kidding. Oh yeah, wait, well, he, he called me a clown. He called me a clown because I, I put up a post about, I said, I don't care if you pass G. Craig Lewis or John MacArthur. None of you are above rebuke. None of you. And so Jay Bryan got in his feelings and what I'm like, that's trying to defend his little flunky pastor like, like a parrot. And I called him, I said, so he called me a clown and a false prophet. I said, I said, Jay Bryan, I said, you know what this is, bro. I said, yeah, I said, bro, you know what this is. I said, we, we can have a, we can have a live conversation right now. I said, since you put this out there publicly, let's get it. 
No, I'm I'm like, I'm like, well, what's he know? Also, why Jay Bonds defended him even harder than most is, uh, let's just look, I, I don't know that none of for facts, so I just have to go by what I see. Let's, but, but look at the evidence. Uh, I know, I've been at the church long enough to know Jay Bond. I know where he works. Yeah, he works, uh, he works, he works at, he works at, uh, 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 what, what's that, appliance store, cons. So, 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 I had to drag this dude, bro. I had to drag. I was like, I like Jay Bryan, dude. Don't, 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 don't play this game with me, dog. I mean, it's it's on it's on my timeline. It's on my timeline on Facebook. I left it there publicly. So, so, and here's so here's my here's my here's my philosophy. If you say something publicly, then don't get in your feelings and get butt hurt when somebody responds to you publicly. I mean, I've heard I've heard G say that a million times. Okay yeah. then. Okay then. So, so. The, 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 so then that applies to G. Craig, that applies to J. Bryan, that applies to anybody. I don't give a crap who you are. It applies to me. I'm not obligated, fool, to inbox you, to DM you, or anything else behind the closed doors when you say stupid stuff publicly, yo. Yeah. So that's that's how I am with, with people like him, right? Now, if I choose to, it's because I want to, not because I have to. Right. So 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 he can't. So Jay Bryant comes to me and says, "Well, man, you know, uh, 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 we can't have a conversation offline." Nah, Negro, we ain't about to have no conversation offline. We gotta have a conversation right here. You call me a clown. You call yourself trying to mock me. Now I'm about to clown you. I said, "Now show me book chapter and verse where your man says that Paul was a eunuch." I said, "I'll wait." I said, "Show me book chapter." I said, "Show me book chapter and verse where the Bible says if a person is single that they're trash, that they're whack, that they that they must be married." In order to be a pastor. And how does that not apply to his own son, too? Like, I, 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 well, his son's like, a hoe. His son's a hoe. But anyway, I digress. His son's a hoe. Okay? That's bottom line. His son has been having sex with women in the church. And, and here's the thing. I live in I live in Houston, dog. How do I know this? How do I know that his daughter, who's a YouTuber, dresses like yeah. a hoe? But you want to call But you want to call Beyonce a hoe? But your daughter dresses like one? Man, exactly. please. Get out of my face that garbage. So, so how do I know this, bro? I know this because people have given this information to me, and it's public knowledge. I didn't care about G. Craig Lewis. You see what I'm saying? I didn't care about what was going on over there until I saw people being affected, being manipulated, being, now they're being scared. Look, when you got people that are afraid to put up a post about what movie they want to go see, but then you got a, you got G. Craig Lewis up here bragging about going to see X Men, going to see the Avengers. But you got just as much. That, that's my point. That's my. That's my point. And you talk about the Illuminati. You talk about witchcraft. You talk about sorcery and Avengers and X Men and Black Panther got that and then some on steroids. And you have no problem going to see that. You see what I'm saying? So. I've had this conversations, unfortunately, even with my sister uh, at times. We, we've had disagreements on stuff like this, like uh, Harry Potter for whatever. You can, you know, right. everybody's got their views on it, whatever. Right. My thing is, maybe I'm wrong. I'm saying I'm willing to admit when I'm wrong. My thing is, you know, it's to every person, you have to know yourself. Right. And if, if you can read it and you know it's fiction and you're able to know what fiction is, then that's you. You can handle it. Right. But there and blanket statement and tell everybody ever who has ever picked up that book that they are now condemned and they're gonna you're introducing witchcraft into your life and this and that that just that's my that's point that's you're my point that's my point I, I, I don't, did you even read the email that I sent out to G. Craig and I made it public did you read that blog yet uh, the, the one uh, about all the, the sexual stuff yep yeah dude it broke my heart it, that's what I said it broke my heart so, so you do understand that I that I I have the receipts to prove this stuff, right? And that's what I, and that's what I wanted to get to next. Like I, I, I understand what I'm saying, but like, where is it all coming from? Like it's it, just it, like, it, like it, it is, but it's not. Like yeah. it makes sense at the same time. And when we've been so deep into here, it, all of it, it's like ripping a bandaid off. You know, it hurts a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I'm just trying to get. 
all this stuff came from all this stuff came from when I dropped when I dropped the post and started dropping videos, people started sending me information. Talk to this person, talk to that person, contact this person, contact that person, and that's what I did. And what I did was I kept notes, have documented conversations, just in case somebody gets amnesia and they say they didn't say this. Oh no no no. Yes you did. Here it is right here. You see what I'm saying? So, so I have I have my proof. The only thing that I'm not going to produce is video evidence. Right. I'm not gonna do that because that's like that. Bottom line, I'm, I'm I'm gonna address that on my next live. Just to let you know that. Uh, uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it from a biblical perspective on why I'm not gonna produce any videos. I know about the people that he's had sex with. This is why this is why people like Lois Burke, her husband, try to call him, trying to come see me, and I'm like, let me say something, bro. You don't want to come over here with that. Because, right. so you don't want to come over here with that, bro. I, I don't, I, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm concealed carry every, every day. Why would he be upset at you? Why is he not upset at you? That's, 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 that's my point. That's my point. So I told him, and it was this was this was on a public site. Because uh, a, a blog had took my took my blog. Because matter of fact, what happened was uh, two weeks ago, I posted the blog and I and I warned Craig. I warned him publicly. I said this is why I called it DefCon. I, I, before I went DEF CON 1 with it, I said, now, nah, you better know what this is. And so then I put it out there, right? Within a, within an hour, the uh, the blog was taken down because Craig and, and his, his people called and reported it, whatever. And so uh, so then a, a brother of mine said, hey, man, I took a PDF of it. I said, man, thank God. I said, you took a PDF? He said, yeah, I took a PDF of it, man. I screenshot it. He said, I can let you have it. I said, man, send it to me. So he sent that to me, so I started putting it out through my emails. That's why people have been inboxing me and saying, hey, man, can I get an email, a copy of, of this letter that you put out, you know, to Craig and all that? And that's what I've done. So I warned Craig and I told him, if you don't step down, this is what I'm going to do. I want you gone, yo. I want you gone. And I hope, and I hope when you said that, you know, like, uh, I understand why you're doing everything you're doing. I hope you understand, like, it's for his own good. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, and and, and and even listen, even if it ain't for his own good, it's for the good of the people that's being affected. You know what I'm saying? So so really to be out to really to be out to you I don't give a crap about G Craig. You understand know I me? Mean? I don't give a I don't care about his feelings. I don't care about how this affects him. I hope he tosses and turns. I hope he loses weight. I hope he gets no sleep. You know what I'm saying? I mean? That's what I hope. I hope that it, the I hope that the, the 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 pain and the misery and the uh, uh 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 the problems that he's caused so many people. Look, yo, listen. So many people that he has caused problems have contacted me, and their words to me are this: "Take him down." Those are their words to me. Take oh, them down. Well, why don't you hold for just one moment? Sure. Uh, I got from the house speaker there. Okay, just say. All right, so. but, but basically, like I was saying, man, you know, uh, this this man is 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 uh, he's wicked and evil to the core. Okay. It's, it sounded like it, but that, you gotta understand how hard that is for people in the church who, like I said, a lot of our lives were changed for the better, at least family wise, from the core of. You know, just the, the little bit of the actual word he preaches mm -hmm. works enough to pay people. Uh, at least, uh, you know, to change them a little bit. So it's right. hard. But that's yeah. how. But 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 here's the thing. That's how. That's how most cults start. I know. They I know. And, and that's what I'm. That's what I'm learning now. Yeah. And I'm, learning, I'm learning that what saved all of us and what changed our lives wasn't him. It was the little bit of right. Truth. He makes exactly. Him. Exactly. And a little bit of truth can be enough to, exactly. to change your life and convict you. Right. So, but that doesn't mean everything else you put exactly. in your life. That's it why. Sense. That's why you have to test and you have to test all things. The Bible says, "Hold right. fast to that which is true." It, 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 listen, any pastor, any so-called pastor, that matter, has an issue with you asking a question is not a freaking pastor. Right. Okay. When I when I was pastoring a church. Uh, uh, I would tell people, don't take my word for it. Be a Berean. Go home. Study the word for yourself. And if I said anything that's wrong, bring it back to me, and I'll make it right. And I've done that before. I've, right. I've said something in a sermon, and a brother have come back to me and said, hey, you know. I've heard stuff like that. I've heard Pastor G say stuff like that, too. But you, how? How do you come back to him? Well, he's always so guarded off, like. I even That's my point. Then you're not. He's not approachable. You, you, you're not, he's, listen, the, 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 this, the, 
The God says, I'm going to give you shepherds in Jeremiah 3.15. I'm going to give you shepherds out of my own heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Right? So how does how does a man of God reflect the Son of Man? How does he how, how do you know that this person is a man of God? By how he teaches, leads, feeds, and protects the flock. That's how you know. Because if he does not do it the way that Jesus does, and I'm not talking about perfectly, but even in his imperfection, his desire is to teach people the word of God. I'm not sure if you ever read Acts twenty. Right? But it, yeah, that, that is fine. So but in, in Acts twenty, Paul Paul is he meets with the with the with the elders in Ephesus. This right. is his farewell address to the elders in Ephesus. And he tells he, and I'm I'm gonna read it just for this for the sake of of, 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 of having it. Okay. <laughs> uh, just for the sake of uh 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 having it in your in your hearing. So in Acts in Acts twenty, Paul writes Paul, Paul gives his address to the to the to the church of Ephesus. And this is one of the texts that I that I had preached from years ago when I was pastoring. And it says, uh Verse 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 eight, verse seventeen. And from my leaders, he sent to Ephesus and called to him the elders. Now you know one of the things I strive. One of the things I do, bro. When when you when you when you believe in expository preaching and teaching, dude, you 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 you'll see something and you have to stop and break it down. Right. You know what I'm saying? It, it is it is second nature. So I'm I'm gonna try not to go too too long with this, but. No, you're good, man. Take your time. Verse eight. Verse 17 says, He sent to Ephesus and called to him the elders. Notice the word elders is, is in plural. Right? right? Now, I could talk about the elders that are there at, LBC, at ABC, but let me just say that they're not biblical elders. Right. They're, they're not, and, I, and, I, and, and, and I, I, I can explain that later. But you you, you probably know that these people are not biblical elders, but they are, um, are, are biased yes men. Yeah, okay. they are. Some of them are, are very nice men, and I think some of them have had good intentions too, but I yeah. think they've but yes, man, But yes, men, nonetheless, because they're handpicked by Craig, okay? They're not sent from God. They're handpicked by Craig. Uh, but the text says in verse eight, verse 18, he says, And then he had came to, to them and said to them, You know for yourselves from the first day that I, I set foot in Asia, how I was with you the whole time. Notice, verse 19, Serving the Lord with all humility. And with tears and with trials which came upon me through the plots of the Jews. Verse 20, how I did not shrink from declaring from declaring to you anything that was profitable and teaching you publicly and from house to house, solemnly testifying to both Jews and Greeks, repentance toward God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And and now, behold, bound in spirit, I am on my way to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me. Now what happened to me there, except that there that the Holy Spirit solemnly testifies to me in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions await me. But I do not consider my life of any account as dear to myself, in order that I may finish my course and the ministry which I have received from the Lord Jesus, to testify solemnly to the gospel of the grace of God. And you and now, behold, I Man, now behold, I know that all of you among whom I went about preaching in the kingdom, preaching the kingdom will see my face no more. Therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men. In other words, Paul is saying, listen, I'm giving, I'm, I know what I'm saying to you is with a clear conscience. I ain't anybody's blood on my hands because I taught you the word of God. I'm teaching you the word of God now. You know that. So there's no reason for me to even question my, my, my integrity regarding this because I know what I have given you has come from God. Verse 27. He says, for I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel or whole purpose of God. Here's a question I ask everybody when I talk to them that, that either have been members of ABC or are members of ABC right now. Have Has Craig, has G. Craig Lewis, has George ever, ever in the five years that you were members there, ever preached through an entire chapter or a book of the no. Bible? No, not once. Not one time. Not one time? No, not one time. Never went verse by verse, line upon line, precept upon precept. He's never taught you guys the word of God rightly interpreted. No, 